Well, thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me. All right, so we're just going to start out when you decided to, and were you drafted, or what was the situation? I was drafted uh, in 1951. Mm -hmm. uh, I had uh, three years of college, actually one year of academic college and then two years of art school. And uh, it was during the Korean War. Uh, it was 1951. Uh, 1951, they were looking for people. They needed right. they needed troops, so they enacted the draft. And I was the I believe the first or second draft out of Cleveland, Ohio, mm -hmm. that went to the draft, Army right. and Navy or Army and Marine Corps. And uh, I uh, it was funny I. Uh, they gave, you, they gave you a slip of paper, and on it it said your choices, your military choices. You know, it was very democratic, all right? So I, I had, they had Army, Navy, uh, Coast Guard, uh, Air Force, Marine, or n none. So I put down Navy, which I discovered later on was Marine Corps' is a branch of the Navy, really, right. you know? And uh, then I put down Air Force, and I put down I don't think I put down army. My brother had been in the army, and uh, so then I put down none. Well, the first guy that was called up that day was me. And I went up, and they had to sign a paper with the draft, the guys that were working the draft board thing. So I went up, and they said, sign here, and I took the pen, and I looked down there, and I remember distinctly in the right-hand corner, up on the top, penciled in, it was said USMC. And I looked at the guy and I said, what's that? And he said, ah, it's, you're in the Marines, they're all the same, don't worry about it. I said, okay. So there were six of us that day out of a uh, hundred and some that went into the Marine Corps. And they uh, took us into a back room and they had a, a Marine officer there and he swore us in right there at the draft, at the draft board. At the, it wasn't draft board, it was the reception center or something in Cleveland. And then they marched us over to the federal building in Cleveland. And uh, we, they, they gave us a piece of paper with a frontal and an exterior view of your body. And you had a mark on there, all your scars, so they could locate you in case you took off on them. I think that was probably part, part of it, you know. And uh, so... Uh, you know, we did that, and then they said, this was in the afternoon, and they said, go home, report back to the Cleveland Terminal, which was the train station, in Cleveland at 8.30 that night. You know, and they just let us go home, and uh, I went home, and I walked in the house, and uh, my brother had been uh, 82nd Airborne during the European War. And uh, I walked in, and my mother looked at me, and she said, you look like you've seen a ghost. What's wrong? And I said, well, Mom, I said, you better sit down. And she, I have her sit down, and I told her what, I, what happened. I was in the Marine Corps. She says, okay, okay. So then that night they drove me to the Terminal Tower in Cleveland, uh, right next to, you know, the movie, uh, uh, what is it? Oh, The Christmas Story? Mm -hmm. that, that department store was right by the train station. A terminal tower in Cleveland. Anyway, side light. Uh, so then uh, we were waiting to get on the train, and uh, I remember this too distinctly. The Salvation Army came by, and they gave us each a little, little shave kit thing like that. They were really, they were great. Salvation Army was great. So then we got on the train, and we went down to a uh, little burg. Uh, outside of Washington, almost in South Carolina, called Yamasee, South Carolina. And uh, we got off. By that time, we had taken the train to Washington, and they put us on buses, and they took us to that outpost. All it was was it looked like a little schoolhouse, American flag in the front with bunks. And we went in, and, of course, the first thing that happened was they had a, a Marine drill instructor there, and, okay, gave you two minutes, get in there, do what you have to do, and get in bed. Get in your rack, so we did. And uh, then the next morning, uh, they introduced me to grits. I had never had grits before. They marched us to a restaurant in this little town. 
And uh, we had eggs and grits. And then we went uh, by bus to Paris Island. Well, you go into Paris Island and you go through the gate and you don't come out of that gate for two months. And that's where the training was, Paris Island boot camp. And so it was eight, eight extensive weeks of training. Did you have any idea what it was going to be like from your brother? No, no. The only, I must tell you this. My brother told me before I went in. He said, I'll give you some advice. Three things. Keep your mouth shut. Volunteer for nothing. And do not lend anybody any money. So I kept my mouth shut. I never lent anybody any money, but I did volunteer later on for some things which really were, it was good for me that I did what I did. Okay. So then uh, I was in a training platoon and there was about, I think six or eight of us that had college. And uh, upon completion of the two months training, uh, they, called each one of us individually before they assigned us, and they wanted to send us to officer school, candidate school okay. in Quantico, Marine Officer School. Well, I was not dumb. I mean, I knew what was happening. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, and not, not a one of us went to Quantico. None of us wanted it, but we were all draftees. And our platoon was probably made up of, I would say at least 50 to 60% of draftees at that time. And, uh, you know, just wanted to get in and get out, you know. But uh, it was very interesting that uh, uh, what they did, then upon graduation we got our assignments and all six of us were sent to advanced infantry training. We had guys who could barely write their names, were sent to Washington, D.C. for uh, guard duty, uh, the National uh, the Gun Factory in Washington, uh, 8th and I, which is the headquarters of uh, the Marines. They got all these, and, and also Cherry Point, which is a Marine uh, air wing there on the East Coast. So these guys were getting all these great assignments, and the six of us, we were sent to Camp Lejeune in North Carolina for advanced infantry training. And, I mean, they got even with us in a way, you know. Right, because you become an so, officer. Yeah, right, you come an officer or else you... Or else you hit the bottom. Right, you hit the bottom. <laughs> So uh, we went, and uh, after boot camp, they att we had 10 days, liberty, or leave. And I went home to Cleveland, where I grew up, had my 10 days off, reported back to uh, Camp Lejeune after 10 days. And I got there, and there were so many incoming Marines at that time that uh, my sea bag got lost, and so they put me in a uh, casual company, which was they didn't, they couldn't really place me anywhere because they didn't have any uniforms. Everything was in that bag. It was amazing. I mean, a bag would stand about this high, right. and you could fold everything up, all your issue, overcoats, mm -hmm. everything. It's amazing. I couldn't do it today. I'm sure I couldn't do it today, but uh, that got lost somewhere in the transport, transportation. They finally found it after about a week and a half, but in that time I was at uh, this casual company and got to meet a lot of the guys that were reservists that were coming back from Korea and heard their stories and what was happening over there so with them. So what did them. you think about that? What did they think of it? No, yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of them were very bitter mm -hmm. uh, because uh, they were called up. A lot of them had very little training. Mm -hmm. uh, they had gone to maybe one or two meetings, you know, and then they were called up and they were sent immediately to Korea. And, uh, but anyway, that was, anyway. So then uh, after that, I was assigned to uh, Easy Company and uh, 8th Marines, 2nd Marine Division. And uh, I went in there as a, uh, actually I went in and the sergeant Master Sergeant interviewed me, and uh, I told him that uh, someone had told me in the uh, casual company, I said, if, you're, if you go in the infantry, you don't want to be a BAR, Browning Automatic Rifle Man, and you're small, and they'll pr they're going to want you to do that. You don't want that, because in the first place it's heavy, and if you get into combat, that's the first guy they get rid of, right? 
So survival, okay? Right. <laughs> so uh, he, I said, well, what, you know, what do I do? And he says, well, get in, get in the mortars, 60 millimeter mortars, which is the company uh, artillery support with the, with the, with the company. And uh, because uh, there's usually three or four men to a squad and each one carries a different thing. And then when you go out on maneuvers or even generally in places, you, you dig in and you sit. You don't, you're not out running around yeah, like time. a, you're not recon, you're not with a machine gun and that sort of stuff. So I said, that sounds pretty good. So uh, this sergeant interviewed me and I said, uh, well, he said, we're going to put you in, in a, with a BAR. And I said, sergeant, I said, uh, my brother had been a, a mortarman in the Second World War, which was a lie. And I said, I'd like to, I'd like to be in the, in the mortars if I could be. So he looked at me and he says, oh yeah, we got an opening there. So he put me in the thing and I ended up as a, a gunner uh, with the mortars. And uh, so I went in, went in that and we went, in, we went on some field training things down in uh, North Carolina, uh, like in December, January. It's cold down there too, believe it or not, yeah. January. Yeah. And uh, after that, uh, it was real interesting. I, uh, I had an opportunity Talk about volunteering for things. Mm -hmm. I had an opportunity. I'd gotten to know the first sergeant because we would go to church together. Okay. This is gonna this is gonna sound like I'm a real operator, but I, I'm not. <laughs> I've never operated that much in Survival. my life. <laughs> Survival. Yeah. Well, anyway. Uh, so I, I would go to the church with this uh, the, the first sergeant, and uh, at one formation after Chow, uh, he said. Uh, we got to replace this guy. He uh, has been screwing up in uh, field message center school, and it had already been started a week. And uh, he said, "We need somebody to replace him." So I went, "Yeah, I'll take that, Sarge. I'll take that job." So he says, "Okay, Bolt." He says, "You tomorrow morning go over to the Quonset hut where they have the classes." So I started a week late and came out first in my class because I was really motivated to get right. out of the infantry. Yeah, right. I wanted to get out of the infantry. Then I was going to go into uh, battalion, from company to battalion, or, yeah, from company to battalion, and uh, uh, in the signal corps area, okay, uh, and communications. And, uh, but it was, that was interesting, too, because in the meantime, and I'm an artist, as you, you know, uh, I would be painting signs for uh, guys' sea bags sure. and stuff I'd put there. You know where they've been right. in Korea, right. Panmunjong, or you know wherever. I uh, painted with oil paints on their sea bags. You know, and then I did portraits of photographs, right. and uh, then I ended up doing uh, signs, painted signs. One I did uh, VD only. The last urinal in the bathroom <laughs> said VD only, and, I, and that was my job. I painted VD only. <laughs> <laughs> took a lot of oh, it was with a long brush, with a long brush, with a long brush, you know. Uh, but uh, <laughs> that was pretty funny, and uh, so uh, I did that. And then when I got my, I got my transfer. I finished school. I think it was on a Friday. On Saturday, the captain called me into his office, the company commander, and he looks at this paper and he says, uh, "Bolt," he said. Uh, You've got a transfer to uh, communications, a mess field message center up in uh, battalion. He says, but you don't have to take it. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at him, and you know what had happened previous to this was that there was a young uh, second lieutenant from Purdue, who had gone to Purdue, uh, wanted me to be like the public affairs assistant, mm -hmm. but I could not type at that time. Oh. I didn't know how to type. So the public affairs assistant had to work in the office typing when he wasn't doing his, you know, sending people home right. on Red Cross leave and things like that, you know. And so this captain, who's now telling me I don't have to take this transfer, he blocked me from getting that job in the office. Because but then, but, right, but then he's telling me, get this, this officer, this captain is telling me that uh, he said, uh, I understand you're an artist. And I said, yes. He says, well, I was a account director for Republican Steel, Republic Steel in art. 
And I just looked at him and I just, I didn't want to hear anything about his career or anything like that. I said, I'll take that transfer. And I took the transfer and went into battalion. And uh, then in battalion, uh, we had the field message center and, you know, teletype and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And uh, it was interesting. I continued to do uh, artwork. I ended up painting a lot of signs for uh, officers and non-coms desk. Desks, the little desk in old English lettering, you know, on a little plaque, a little wood shop would make my, sure. my little triangular piece of wood and finish it. And then I would paint with old English lettering on there. And these guys would pay me for it. It was great. And uh, well, anyway, there was a, a major, a reserve major from Ohio, and I was from Ohio, who was the chaplain, was the Protestant chaplain. And he got wind that I was doing artwork, okay? Well, he was uh, a reserve officer had been called back, a chaplain, and he was really hot on the idea that the military, they'll take someone who is, this is extreme, a doctor, and make him a truck driver, right. you know? And uh, so here you are an artist, and they're making you drive a Jeep, delivering messages. He says, that doesn't make any sense. So he got me a job uh, painting Marine Corps, big Marine Corps emblems in yeah. color yeah. on drum heads because we, we had a marching, we had a, a bagpipe marching band deal. Uh, so I did that. Did you like doing that? Yeah, well it was, it was nice, it was fun. Uh, it was, you know, it was something I had done, I was an artist, you know, and I did that on the outside, I did painting and all that kind of stuff. And so uh, he, uh, said, well, you know, you should not be in this outfit at all. He said, I'm going to get you a transfer up into uh, a regiment. No, no, he, no, I was, I was already in regiment. He was going to get me a transfer into division, training aides, the group that did all the, the training, all the maps and all the, uh, everything, anything to do with training, okay, but aides, artwork, film, stuff like that. So I said, well, that sounds, that sounds pretty good, you know. And he did, he got me transferred. So by, I think it was June of, uh, I went in and I, I went in in August and I think by June, I was already in division, training aides, doing artwork. And uh, we would make the signs for the maneuvers when we went sure. down to South America. We did, a, uh, we did all the outdoor signs, we did the maps. Were you still in North Carolina or? Yeah, we were, I was still in North Carolina, right. yeah. And, uh, this has been 1952? Uh, 50, right. Yes, 52, yeah. yeah, right. So how long did you do that? How long did you do that? I did, actually, I did the artwork from, 19, from June of 52 until August of 53 when I was okay. uh, mustered out. Right. And uh, during that period of time, uh, we, had quite, we had quite an extensive group of people. We had artists from all over the country working in that group. We had about 26, 26 men, which is a lot of people. We had our own Quonset hut, because we lived in the barracks, but we had our own Quonset hut where we worked. Each artist, had, I mean, we were so unmilitary. We, we each man had his own little, his own little right. drawing desk, yeah. and you, you know, you put your name on it, you put right. your own little logo right. on it, stuff place. like that. And, and we did, uh, like I said, we did, you know, I did a whole series of paintings of Know Your Enemy with the Korean with the, the hat on and the quilted jacket, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And, and then uh, when then we did, the whole unit, 2nd Marine Division, uh, along with the Army, Navy, uh, and the Marines, we did a, a maneuver, quite an extensive one, down, in, uh, uh, down near Viegas, Viegas Island. And uh, we went down there and we spent Oh, well, let's see, that was in 1950, that would have been 53, mm -hmm. the spring of 53. Mm -hmm. And we spent, I don't know, maybe a month, month and a half, something like that, down there. And uh, that, was, that was kind of fun. We were aboard a ship, we were aboard the command ship. Sure. We were aboard the command ship with the, uh, with the generals and the majors and everything else, and uh, with the photo lab, the great Navy photo lab was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And the guys were great. And uh, we did, uh, this is going to sound silly, but we actually did a cruise book. 
that uh, that everybody got. All the Marines got. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know where mine is. I think it's at home somewhere. It's been sixty some years. I don't know where it is. Right. But uh, we did this book, and uh, then when we came, when we and, and let's see, when we went there, we went in. What what was really interesting? We ended up being assigned to one of the uh, uh, command ships that was kept in the bay when we had the invasion. And uh, we kept track of all the waves that were coming in, the troops that were coming in on their landing crafts. And we would record it. We had it a gigantic blackboard. And we would keep track of every unit that was at the demarcation point and then went in to the beach. Of course, it was a maneuver. It was, you know, there wasn't any uh, actual fire or anything like that. But uh, that was kind of fun because you got to see a little sure. bit of that end of it anyway. And uh, and then after that, when they secured it, then we all went in, or a bunch of us went in with the command group and set up maps mm -hmm. so that they could have a big powwow on, you know, what this group did and what that group did. And it was a gigantic map. I mean, God, it was as big as that section in there. And then we went back to North Carolina and... Uh, uh, Did you draw those maps, Russ, or how were those maps produced? Those they, were, they were drawn, yeah. They were drawn, they were drawn yeah. maps, yeah. Okay. yeah. That's yeah. what I thought. That's yeah, they weren't, yeah they, no, they were not photographed or yeah. I mean, they weren't projected or anything like that. Yeah. And then we went back to North Carolina and after we landed and secured, and again, we had a, la we had a landing in North Carolina too, mm -hmm. on the, the beach there. And then, then they had a... Uh, a review of the whole thing and another big map in the big movie theater there on the base mm -hmm. with a big big map you know and every and of course all we did was the grunt work and the generals sure. and everybody else did the, mm -hmm. all that stuff you know but uh, it was interesting I uh, our group our group not only had uh, we not only did all the signs and all the lettering and everything else we also had the film library mm -hmm. And the film library consisted of uh, combat films, a lot of medical films from uh, various operations on wounded mm -hmm. soldiers, Marines, stuff like that. That was really interesting because uh, we we made a we made a regular like a projection room sure. with, with chairs, and the sergeants would come in from these various units, and they'd want to have some film to take to their units. So we would re, we'd show them. We'd run them through the cameras and we'd show them to them, and then they could take them. So when, on weekends, we would go over there and we would show films for ourselves, you know, so it was fun. And so did you go anyplace after this? No, that's the only place I ever went. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was interesting. The uh, uh, I think it was like in uh, late June or early July, we had a general inspection from Washington, D.C. came down and he went through the whole camp reviewing everything. And when he came to our, came to our Quonset, Quonset hut. hut, he couldn't believe it. He couldn't <laughs> believe it. You know, he just, so. All this non-military hmm. stuff. <laughs> yeah, he said, what is going on here? So within a week, <coughs> they had transferred everybody except lieutenant, sergeant, corporal, I think those are the only, or maybe one other PFC. Okay. Everybody else was transferred. I ended up in the artillery, artillery uh, oh. regiment oh. of the Second Marine Division. Never saw a field piece though. Mm -hmm. I got there. I no more than took my papers and transferred them in the office with the first sergeant. I get a call in the office. I go in the office, and he said the major wants to talk to you. I said, uh oh, what happens now? You know, because the sergeant had told me. He said. You haven't you you don't have any record of having done any training, right. yeah. you know, other than right. boot camp. In boot camp, I did right. you know yeah. training, and uh, uh, I said, oh boy, now I'm in trouble because the sergeant said you don't you're going to have to go the rifle range, you're going to have to do all these things because you haven't done them for two years. So I figured, oh, I'm in trouble now, and I get go go in there, and he looks at me, and he says, well, he says I see you're an artist. And I said, yeah, <laughs> and uh, he said. Uh, well, he said, uh, I'm in charge of the officers' club dance. 
We need somebody to decorate it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. A month later, you know, in about a, a month or three weeks, he said, it's a Hawaiian Nights theme. And I said, okay, I'll do that. And uh, so he gave me two lieutenants, a Hawaiian carpenter, a sergeant, and myself. There were the four of us, okay? And they gave me a Quonset hut to work in. And so the Hawaiian carpenter and I went out to the, they, have, they had a, uh, like a, uh, a yacht basin there with you know, little, little boats there that guys could use on the weekends, right on the inlet there. We went out and we found an old uh, canoe. And we took the canoe and brought it back. And this Hawaiian guy made it into an outrigger, you know, with the big thing on the front. And I painted it all up, you know, and everything else with the thing. And then he made a, uh, a, a grass uh, hut. Mm -hmm. And I made drums and tom-toms, and then they made, uh, we got fishnet, fishnetting, and uh, I strung it all around the pool, and I made paper mache fish, big ones, colored, yeah. stuck them in the thing, you know, and everything like that. You got to be creative. Yeah, got, it was great. It was great duty. I mean, it was fun, you know. So I got that all set up, and uh, uh, then the major comes out and looks at it, he says, hey, I'll buy you a drink. He bought me a drink, and that was it. That was the end of it. Boom. Then I never got invited to the party, obviously, because I wasn't an officer. And uh, so uh, I had, I think, a week or two weeks before I was going to be mustered out. And uh, I got a call from, uh, uh, again, from the office, and I went in, and I met this uh, the Catholic chaplain. And he had just come back from Georgetown where he was studying. He was doing, his thesis was on fighting communism. So he said, uh, I'd like you to illustrate my thesis for me. So I said, okay, that's fine. And I mean, it was hot. This was in, this was in late July. And it, down there, it gets really hot. And so I said, great, where do I work? He said, well, you can work in my office, which happens to be air conditioned, okay? <laughs> So I'd get up in the morning, put on my starched dungarees, I'd walk through the pine trees and go work in his office, and I worked that right up to the day that I left, you know. <laughs>